Yeah, Star P-Series PBX now supports hot standby on the appliance edition and software edition. So we can now set an identical backup for our P-Series PBX and have our phone system running with more reliability and availability. In this video, we will explain how to configure the primary PBX and backup PBX to set up hot standby for our phone system. Now please upgrade the P-Series PBX to the latest version and let's dig in. Now only with the correct server hostname, local IP address, and access code can we realize the authentication and establish the connection between primary and backup PBX. Now before we start it, we need to have two PBXs that are totally the same. This means that they have to be of the same model, same hardware version, same firmware version, with same modules and expansion card installed in the same slots. Now we have to install both PBX in the same LAN, assign a static local IP address of the same network face to the LAN ports of both PBXs. Check the connectivity, of course, if you need further explanation on network setting, please check this video. And if everything's good, we can move forward to set up the hot standby. First of all, we lock in the primary PBX as the administrator. And in the system, click and enter hot standby. Here we enable hot standby. Then, in server mode, we set this PBX as primary server. In primary server hostname, we set a name to identify the primary PBX. Then in secondary server hostname, we put in the name for our backup PBX. Here we need to take a note of both names because they will be used again when we set up the backup PBX. Then in the secondary server IP address, we put in the local IP address of the backup PBX. Then we move on to configure an access code. Let's copy this access code as well for the next step. Now we scroll down to virtual IP address. Here we need to set an untaken local IP address of the same local network face. This IP address will be used for all SIP registration, including all SIP terminals and trunks, so that when the primary PBX fell down and backup PBX takes over, all the internal and external connections will be maintained and keep running. So we also need to memorize this IP address for our configuration in the next step. After we put in the virtual IP address, all other network info is automatically filled. We can make any change if necessary. Then in advanced section, we recommend keeping all default parameters. Here we have two additional options. Recording data synchronization is for call recording real-time synchronization. And as for unilateral WAN port, if enabled, only one WAN port of the primary server and secondary server will be enabled. When PBX hosting by failover occurs, the WAN IP address will remain unchanged and will be switched to the active PBX server. We can active the additional functions if needed. Now that we complete the setup for the primary server, click on Save. OK, now let's move on to the backup PBX. Log in as the administrator. Then in the system, find hot standby and set up the server mode to secondary server. And then we enter the primary server hostname, secondary server hostname, primary IP address, and access code correspondingly from the previous step. Be careful, don't make any mistakes. Then in the virtual IP address, we put in the same virtual IP address from primary PBX settings. And in advanced section, we make the same choices as in the primary PBX as well. Once we're down, click on Save. Now we can click to reboot the server so our hot standby will take effect. When the reboot is finished, we can log into primary and backup PBX to check the status. It says running in the primary server and standby in the secondary server. It means that our configuration is being done correctly. Alright guys, that was all we have for hot standby configuration on the p system. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. And don't forget to subscribe our YouTube channel for more updates. Catch you guys in the next one.